Analyzing quotes is one of the most difficult skills that English students have to learn. The primary reason for this is because you need to know some pretty fundamental things before you can even begin to think about analyzing your text or quotes. Now, the thing is, most students are never happy when I tell them that those things require work. Yes, there are ways you can learn to do this quickly, but learn you must. The two things you need to know are one, knowing your text and two, knowing your devices. Without this knowledge, not only will analysis prove difficult, but you will never take your writing to the next level, which is the ultimate goal, right? Knowing your text involves the following criteria. Please note, however, that this will have different wording across GCSEs, A-levels, IB and ATAR, but in English, we are always looking for the same things. Those things are social context, cultural assumptions, values, attitudes and beliefs. The social context is the world of your text and perhaps also the world of your author. This is 100% relevant when examining texts like William Shakespeare, Harper Lee, George Orwell and Akatagawa. In fact, for IB English, Paper 2 is weighted on your ability to connect the world of the author and text together. Now, when we talk about social context, we're examining what kind of society do your characters live in? When is the narrative set? What kind of rules dictate their society? This is always pertinent. In 1984, for Winston, his social context is defined by a 24-7 surveillance society, the totalitarian government of the party, how um, language is regulated and speech is regulated, that everyone dresses the same, the existence of a thought police, and the pervasive presence of propaganda. It is only by knowing the social context that we can begin to consider how the world of the text shapes and affects your characters in different ways. Remember, context is external and is easily identifiable on the surface of the text. We can examine, however, the text on a deeper level by looking at the internal machinations of a society and its cultural assumptions or cultural attitudes. Cultural assumptions and attitudes are beliefs that are widely held so that it is considered part of the very fabric of society itself. Cultural assumptions that underpin the text of 1984 are that everyone is under constant surveillance, that loyalty to the party is the only thing that matters. Anyone who breaks the law will be tortured and die, that no one possesses an individual identity and that there is no point in resistance. As Winston fatalistically comments, sooner or later, they always got you. Within your text, you are studying individual characters. Your characters will either uphold, subvert or resist these assumptions. You need to analyze how this informs part of their character, which leads to the final part of knowing your text, which is knowing your characters, values, attitudes and beliefs and how they are intrinsically linked to social context and cultural assumptions. It defines who they are. Now, beliefs, values, and attitudes are linked, but the foundation is beliefs. Everything that you value and how you behave is determined by your beliefs. The difference between each of these is nuanced, but it's not really port important in knowing an, an explicit uh, definition of each of these terms. What you need to remind yourself is that if you know your character 
And if you know how they will respond to cultural assumptions, you will implicitly know their values, attitudes and beliefs. But a very simple way of thinking about this is by using this kind of thought pattern. For example, if you believe in God, then you may value things such as having a community. And your attitude may be that you might attend church on a regular basis. Alternately, if you believe in climate change, then you might value things such as sustainable energy. And you may buy an electric car. In the case of Winston, he believes that truth and history matters. As such, he values the accurate recording of information and resents the memory hole. For those of you who don't know 1984, the memory hole is a place where all historical facts and information are destroyed. As such, he chooses to take the risk and purchase an empty notebook to write in it. So that's the first part of knowing your text. Knowing the social context, cultural assumptions and values, attitudes and beliefs. Now, please see the other video on the MKM channel, how to use monologues effectively, the power of one, and you might be able to tackle context, cultural assumptions and values, attitudes, beliefs in a speedy way. The second part is knowing your devices. Again, this may be different and have different terms depending on your even your school, let alone what syllabus you are doing. But anything that refers to aesthetic features, stylistic devices, positioning techniques, literary devices, at the end of the day, same, same. You need to be able to identify your devices quickly and easily, but you also need to know them and their effect. Devices are techniques such as symbolism, irony, foreshadowing, hyperbole, pronouns, etc, etc. Each of these techniques are different and so is their effect. The use of irony and the use of hyperbole are used for two different purposes. Let's take irony. When Winston reveals that he feels a connection with O'Brien and a repulsion to Julia, the irony of these feelings is only revealed later in the text, but retrospectively. The effect of that irony is that it foregrounds to the reader just how inverted Winston's world is, how things appear and how they actually are rarely align. You need to learn devices and practice identifying them if you're good at understanding what they are but are struggling to find them within a text then you can go to the other video on the MKM channel how to identify literary devices. Once you have learnt them these techniques will help you to locate them within your text quickly and easily. There are also some great resources that you can get your hands on via EnglishGCSE.co.uk with a Technique of the Week post. Nice! Now, when putting this all together, when it comes to taking all of this into consideration, we can elicit what we know about Winston's world and Winston as a character by examining the following quote. He had carried it home guiltily in his suitcase. Even with nothing written in it, it was a compromising possession. This quote in isolation and without any knowledge of the world of the text or the character involved doesn't produce any significant meaning to the reader. If we don't study the social context, cultural assumptions, values, attitudes, beliefs or literary devices, of course we get nothing. 
in order to produce meaningful analysis, we can draw upon what we know about our text and what we know about the devices. So if we look at our notes and annotations around 1984 so far, it might produce meaningful analysis that looks a little something something like this. Winston's compromising possession of the book and his first entry into it are his first acts of rebellion against the party. Winston has created something outside of himself, an account of life and events that have not been sanctioned by the party or regulated by the thought police. The very act of writing is an act of dissent and punishable by imprisonment or death. Despite this, Winston commits to write. The diary is a powerful symbol within the novel that embodies the paradoxical nature of his existence. It represents both Winston's freedom, albeit temporarily, and his inevitable oppression. He perceives truth as an essential value to be preserved, no matter the cost. As such, from the outset of the novel, Winston is established as a character who yearns, in whatever small way, to hold onto his humanity for as long as possible. Now, I didn't just sit there and try and think, what is the social context in this quote? What are the cultural assumptions? How can I draw upon values, attitudes and beliefs? Nope. This stuff comes pretty easily because I know it. I know the text on an intrinsic level. There is no way that you can produce though this level of analysis without one, knowing your text and two, knowing your devices. So when you go about analyzing textual evidence within your novel, make sure you are asking yourself, how can you read and research around your text? What is the significance about the social context? What are the cultural assumptions that are embedded within the world of the text? What values, attitudes and beliefs are notable about your characters? And how can literary devices illuminate an understanding of the text? Armed with these key questions, you will have no trouble in learning your text and learning your devices. And so, with that said, it is time to start learning, students. Good luck.